everybody, welcome back to Stitching Big Things with Hallie. I'm Hallie, thanks so much for joining me again today. Today is Friday, April 5th, 2024. If you are a new viewer or just stopping by to check out the channel, this is a channel about cross stitch, so hopefully you are in the right place. And uh, if not, stick around, you might end up with a new hobby. And if you are a returning friend, uh, thank you, thank you, thank you for your precious time uh, spending that with me. So how's everybody been? It's been three weeks since I uh, last checked in. Uh, it's been a busy time um, and it's great. Who doesn't, who doesn't love being busy with all the fun things that we're doing? We had spring break in there. Um, I, ha I realized um, back in the fall that my I didn't wasn't going to have a baseball player this year. In baseball, you always have games over spring break, and so you kind of figure, you know, you're kind of stuck. You're not going anywhere. I'm like, hey, we don't have a baseball player this year. Let's go somewhere for spring break. So we booked a trip to Cancun, Playa del Carmen area um, in Mexico, and just had a wonderful week. Um, three of the four boys were able to go. Um, her fourth son, um, who's at Baylor, his uh, spring break was the week before, so he went on spring break with his friends. So it wasn't that he, you know, just got left out. He did something different, um, and we had a wonderful trip. Um, there was lots of fun activities. Um, I think there was some snorkeling. There was um, uh, two of my kids got scuba trained. You know, where you train in the pool, you kind of learn all the stuff, and then they take you to like. I don't know, 30 feet or whatever it is, a shallower dive, but you get to practice. Um, so that was super fun. Um, they went and did some, some deep sea fishing, which I don't have any pictures of, but the boys like to go, well, some of the boys, one of them stayed with me. One of them is like me and doesn't particularly care to do that, which is fine. Um, we all went and did a uh, sightseeing learning expedition about um, a Mayan ruin at Chichen Itza. Um, so that was super fun and super cool. That was a whole day um, event where we got to see, we got uh, to go see those ruins. We got to go see and swim in a cenote, which is kind of a big underground rainwater collection um, that's freshwater. Um, and it was very deep, I think they said 150 feet, so it's a very large one, lovely cool water, and it was a very warm day that day. Um, and so it was wonderful. I don't have any pictures. I have lots of Chichen Itza, none of the cenote, because they were like, anything you don't, if you lose it, you're never going to see it. So if you don't want to lose it, don't take it down into the water. So I left my phone back in the locker. So I made pictures of that. We did a wonderful Mayan uh, lunch. We saw a historic um, Mayan town. Um, and we also saw like a current Mayan town. So it was really, really wonderful. Um, it was a great experience. We did a lot of relaxing. Um, there was a little bit of stitching. Um, I didn't, I only um, missed stitching one day, so I did get quite a bit of stitching in. Not quite a bit. I did a little bit each night, kind of as I was wrapping up the day. So numbers are significantly down. No big deal, because I've got great memories to think about it. But um, while I'm thinking about it, I'm going to go ahead and include a couple of pictures here from our trip. So you can see the boys and see some of the fun things we got to see. Okay, other things that we had happen in there. Uh, last weekend was Easter. So for those who celebrate, um, I hope you had a nice Easter. We did, um, we had a nice meal. We had a small Easter egg hunt, um, had a wonderful time. My son that was over at Baylor um, came home. So we hadn't seen him since Christmas. So that was wonderful. My one that was in Missouri, uh, it's too quick a turnaround. So he stayed up there and went with his girlfriend's family. So that was super nice that he was able to go there. Um, so we did had that. Um, in between, I had a wonderful weekend with some lovely, lovely friends um, in Dallas. And we get together, they're stitchers as well. We get together, we stay the night and kind of have a you know good old fashioned sleepover uh, type situation. We stitch all day, we go out to eat, um, we have snacks, it's wonderful. Um, I really, really enjoy these two ladies, uh, Sasha and Lori. And um, really appreciate that, um, I hope they value um, the time we spend together as well. 
I also have some haul from that little trip because you know if I made it to Dallas I'm closer to a crusted store so I did get a few threads did not buy any charts pat on the back I did get a couple that were gifted to me so I will show you those as well in haul but I did find some threads um, and made some general plans um, with some fabric that I already had so that's kind of fun I'll show you that at the end at haul um, so it's just been a busy busy time when we get to plans you're gonna hear I, my schedule is really packed all the way through really through almost stitch con which is middle of June so it'll be a little hit or miss cross stitch numbers are gonna be a little different than they usually are but that's okay because um, we're gonna have nice wonderful memories um, and you know it's we always have to find a balance within our hobby so okay let's get to the stitching so first thing I want to chat about with you guys is March numbers because here we are we're in April last time I saw you was March 8th I believe 7th or 8th what was it and it was the 8th so it's been a little bit so let's talk March numbers remember once again I had a full week off for basically off I mean I maybe got 100 stitches a day basically off for a week so numbers are a little different my total number of stitches and if you're new or you've never seen this segment before I keep track of all my stitching numbers for me I share them with you not to make you feel good or bad about your stitching they're strictly informational they reflect what happened in my month they let me go back and make plans they let me go back and and really see what projects are drawing my interest so Total number of stitches, 15,943. So still not bad. Full coverage uh, was low this month. I had, you know, full coverage focus February. So this month I was doing a lot of catch up with some other non-full coverage projects. Uh, so non-full coverage was 9,182. And full coverage was 6,700. And 61. Sorry, I've got my notes down here. That's why I'm looking down. I touched 11 projects this month, so not too bad. Um, I had three full coverage and eight non full coverage. I had three new starts, which you're gonna see. What? Three new starts? I had one finish, which you're gonna see. What? A finish? And a small, um, if you remember back from the last video, I have the little tree ornaments that I'm doing. I did, it's not really a full finish, but it's gonna be finished as an, a single ornament. So I'm considering that kind of as a small ornament finish. Um, and again, I did have one day of no stitching. That happened in March. For total for the month, or total for the year is only one day of non-stitching. So pretty darn good still. Okay, so that was my March. Let's start showing you what I was actually able to work on. So last time that we were together, I had showed you guys Tonight We Ride. Tonight We Ride is an Autumn Lane stitchery um, pattern. I am stitching this on all the called for fabric with all the called for things. I got this in a, I think it was a, Halloween mystery box from them a few years ago. It came totally kitted, ready to go with all the called for stuff. So I started it and I was working on this the last time I showed you guys and I needed to finish. I wanted to get a few more stitches into it before I left for vacation. So here is where we are at currently. All of this in here, the building and all this that's down here is all going to be black. So a lot of fill in here towards the bottom, which is great. I kind of like it when you kind of get things outlined and this is great airline stitching because I don't have to consult any kind of um, pattern. I can just get the load my needle and take off. What did I work on last time? Last time I added in all of this black that is over here. That is what got added in so that it can be filled in at a later date. I don't think I am finished over here. I think I kind of just stopped 
um, probably when the thread ran out, quite honestly. So, um, and I've got one hangy thread um, that's more of that brown color, but I wanted to go ahead and extend that black a little bit. There's kind of an odd crease right here, but um, that'll come out. It's just been the way it's been folded, probably in the Q snap. So I only added in 198 stitches since the last time you saw this, but I thought it would be fun to show it. This fabric is fantastic. A 32 count pumpkin patch from Be Stitch Me, of course the called for, and um, it's like five DMC colors. So all DMC. So love that one. He is a, not a focus on a finish, but I think that, you know, with, with a little bit of effort, he would be easy to finish this year. So I will continue to, you know, give him some, some regular attention. Okay, so after tonight we ride, then uh, we were at vacation time. So I wanted to grab a project that I thought would be easy to take with us on vacation. So something that only had one color, um, I, something that was already in Pattern Keeper, so I could just take my tablet along. I didn't have to take a whole bunch of stuff. And for that, I chose Variant of Interest. Vari variant of Interest is a long dog sampler pattern. I am stitching this on 28 count Picture This Plus Chime. I'm stitching this with a uh, Silks For You silk um, that is the colorway PR005. And I'm stitching this two over two on the 28 count. So let's show you where I am currently at. There is my current progress. What did I work on in the last three weeks? It was basically kind of this whole section here. These birds, I had kind of come down to here, so it was everything down from here. So super fun, easy stitching, just following the pattern. Um, I am loving this. The one thing that I think is hard is this is the creamiest of yellow. Um, it really washes out on this, on the video. It is creamy, creamy. I wonder if I can get it back far enough. It's, it's just this gorgeous yellow. And so with this blue on it, it just pops and sings. I just adore it. So love, love, love that color combination. So I was able to add in 1,253 stitches on that. Again, um, you know, stitching on the plane, stitching a little bit every night. Um, it does add up, which is great. And um, this is a beautiful piece. So happy to have got a little work in on it. Then um, if you have been with me for any amount of time, you know that my focus this month, well, this year really, um, is going to be Cookie Fairy. Cookie Fairy is a Randall Spangler project that is charted by Hade. It is my full coverage project that I am working on with a focus on a finish for the year. I have basically taken the remaining stitches at the beginning of the year. I think it was about 32,000 stitches I had left. And I'm like, hey, if I divide that by 10 and I'm able to get 3,200 stitches a month, Gives me a little wiggle room in case I get behind. By the end of the year, I could have this one done. So far, I am ahead of schedule. I've been able to get at least my 3,200 in every month. And I am happy to report I got in, let me look at my number, 3,335 3, this month as well. And here is where Cookie Fairy is currently at. I have worked all over a number of places um, this last um, month. I worked in through here on these back um, bricks, adding in that purple, added quite a bit of color into the candlesticks, spent a very large majority of the time down here in these reds with different um, kind of this, um, there was a bright red and now it's kind of almost like a bricky red color. Um, that is giving you the dimension of the blanket. Um, so a lot of that got put in um, down through here. Um, of course, that red, anything time that it translates up into the blanket, it gets put up into there. 
Um, and then I'd also added some of these oranges and browns down through his mouth. So that is kind of where um, all of the progress happened this month. I'm currently working um, uh, cross country and finishing by color. So I don't, I didn't look to see how many zeros I had this time. I will report that next time, but you know, every time I work, I usually get a couple of zeros. Um, and a lot of times I'll alternate between, you know, a color that maybe has 50 stitches left and something that has 800 stitches left. So I alternate so that I'm just not left with a few random stitches here and there. It kind of fills it in as we go. So super fun, looking forward to it. I made it to 84.65%. Um, and I'm really, really enjoying um, that one. So after I worked on that and got that little goal accomplished, I decided that it was time to get my Autumn Quaker goal um, and the requirement for this month also taken care of. If you have not been with me recently, I took Autumn Quaker by Rosewood Manor. Here it is. And I basically, this was one of my older projects that I kind of fell back in love with at the end of last year. And I decided to take this project, break it into 11 sections. So also gives myself a little bit of wiggle room. So broke it into 11 sections, kind of randomly, not randomly, but like, I just like, okay, this looks like a good amount of stitching. This looks like about the same amount, you know, kind of just broke it up. And every month I do one. So... I was able to get my monthly allotment of stitches in and here is where I am currently at. I'm loving this project. So, so pretty. Let me bring you in and show you which motif I did this time. I was able to work on this motif right here. I was able to add in 764 stitches in that motif. Um, and was able to get that taken care of. So super, super happy, really enjoying the progress, loving this. I'm stitching this on um, 28 count doubloon, which is the called for fabric. I am stitching it with all the Valdani um, bald threads. It is a three stranded um, hand dyed thread. Um, so it does have a lot of variegation in it, which is kind of fun because you kind of get to work with the, with the threads and kind of see where the variegation lies. Um, and so I'm looking forward to having those done. I will probably, you're probably going to see those again on the next video because I think I will probably start maybe this weekend even working on Cookie, working on my 3200 stitches for Cookie, working on my um, Autumn Quaker section as well um, because this month is just going to be so busy and I don't want to miss a month and be behind. So after that, I decided to pull out a Red Maple Fairy. Red Maple Fairy is um, probably my third farthest haid. Um, as of right now, I'm at 51.87% with the stitches that I was able to put in in March. I did 2,764 stitches, so a good amount, but I'm continually working, um, trying to give it a little more, a little more, a little more. Um, focus so that probably not next year and maybe not 2025 but maybe by 2026 this one could be my finish for that year but if I don't keep you know working ahead um, and keep moving him down the road he won't he won't be able to be uh, I won't be able to achieve that goal unless I continually put in some stitches so oh let me show you where it what it looked like uh, red maple fairy this is uh, a Jasmine Beckett Griffith design, charted by Hayde. I'm stitching this um, on an 18 count uh, pre-graded fabric, easy grade fabric, and I'm stitching it two over two. All call for colors, DMC. So don't be alarmed. She is a little horrid looking right now, but I basically worked in through her cheeks, added in a lot more of this peachy color and kind of that top part of her nose. This is all going to be peachy over here as well. I happened to run out of that color while I was with Sasha and Lori because um, I was working on that. So luckily I was able to come home and find refine another um, skein of that in my stash. So at some point I will get that side filled in. Um, 
So I added quite a bit in through here. I also added quite a bit down through her hair. I think I added in this whole section here, which translates down into here, over into here. It's gonna give you some, so just, um, so a couple different colors of brown and a couple different peachy colors. So love, love, love this. Um, super excited. I was able to add in, I think I told you already, 2,764 stitches. So happy to see her get some more love um, and keep her moving down the way. The next project that I worked on actually is a new start. I think I indicated that I had three new starts. Well, this is going to be one of them. And um, when I went over to my friend, uh, Sasha and Lori, um, met with them, uh, they were gonna do some starts. And so I thought, what can I pull out? What do I have that's ready to go? Of course, I went through all my stuff that was ready to go, and I was really feeling this spring pattern. So this is uh, When I Think of Spring by Puntini Puntini. As you can see, I do have the buttons that's gonna go with it, so you're gonna see um, that I, it's, it's, it's just awaiting its buttons that will be put on when I am uh, fully completed with all four seasons. I do have all four of them here which is super fun. Um, autumn, could you hold them up correctly? <laughs> Winter and summer. So I um, have those, have all the buttons. So super excited to stitch spring. So gave it a good start, took it with me. And lo and behold, I was able to get, when I think of spring, totally completed. Sorry, it's a little wrinkly because then I wrinkled, I, I scrunched it up with my Q-snap because on the back side, you're going to see what I started after that. So I started another one of these. So, um, what, so here's where the button, one of the button pieces goes, the flower up here. And I think it has the ladybug up in the four leaf clover. So we will get those added when we are completed with all of them. So, I did have a little bit of issue because I am not stitching this on the called for color. I am stitching this on picture this plus Wren. I thought it was super pretty um, and I had a good size amount of it. So it was super fun. Here is the problem that I ran into. If you look real close, when I started stitching the bunny, I've got, I've got bunny sides that are two different colors and I left it on purpose so you could see what I was talking about. Cause sometimes if you take it out, like you're like, well, I don't understand why would that, it blends into the, it's not 100% blend, but it blends enough, you would not see that bunny look like this. And I wanted my bunny to look, this bunny looks white. That is the difference between the fabric colors. I used a, a warmer fabric, and so the color just disappeared. So I waited, I stitched a little and realized there was a problem kept stitching other colors. When I came home, here was the color that was supposed to be used. And when I came home, I decided, oh no, I dropped it. Hold on just a second. I decided that I would stitch him, try him in 38, 38, 65, 38, 65. So you can see the color variation difference. I mean, you know, they're not that much different, but on this fabric, they're vastly different. So, so we're not doing this one. We decided to go with the 3865. So, love him, but I wanted to leave it. I will go in and pull it out um, and, and restitch that other half of the bunny so that um, he pops out all the way. But I did want to leave it so you guys could see the issue that I was dealing with. So, so there's that. That was the change that I made. And then I was, uh, because I loved that one, was able to get it stitched fairly quickly, I went ahead and started winter. So let me show you which one that looks like in case you didn't see it with all my fumbling earlier, when I think of winter. So I was able to get at least the outline of the snowman in. Again, I used the 3865, so love that. Um, got in the skate. And, and one of the, um, a few of the letters. So I will continue pressing on with that. Um, spring, I was able to add in 2,201 stitches. 
So happy about that. Of uh, winter, I got 1,110 stitches. So I think I got a good start on that. Um, I kind of left it on the Q-Snap. That's why I flipped it because this one I had bunched up and had it clipped over here. I will, I left it because this is in a pretty good spot for me. So I will just continue on. We will see this again. Um, cause I would like to get these stitch up so fast. I would kind of like to get all four of these seasonal things done so that I can enjoy them. So, um, super happy about that. Kind of helps balance out all that full coverage. Um, so then I had one more start. So that was two starts, one start and finish and one start. And then I had one more start. If you have been with me probably since, I think I talked about this on mm, probably the whip parade uh, from the end of last year. I had we fallen in love with Autumn Quaker, which you saw earlier in this video. And I threw out the idea that maybe as each season started, I would start the next uh, seasonal Quaker. So I did start winter Quaker, um, probably right after the first of the year. So I decided now I would do spring Quakers. I have it all kitted, it all come down as a pack. I had the fabric, I had everything ready to go. I thought, I'm feeling spring, grab it, get it started. So that's what I did. This is a Rosewood Manor pattern. I am stitching this on all the called for colors. Picture this plus Valor in 28 count. I am using the Valdani threads, um, just like in the other one. And here is where I was able to get to. So love, love, love. I particularly enjoyed those reds. It was fun to see the variegation come out. Like I said, these are stitched with the three-stranded Valdani threads that are highly, highly variegated. So it really gives you a different look even than what um, is stitched on the model or stitched um, in person. So yours is really very different um, and kind of um, individualized to the way you stitch, which is kind of fun. And once I figured out, you know, all the color changes and how to deal with all that and wrapped my brain around it, I have been very much enjoying it. I love the bottom of this particular picture. There's lots of tulipy type flowers towards the bottom. So it makes me excited to get down there and get some of that filled in. I do think I will continue just like I'm doing Autumn Quaker this year. I will probably pick one next year break it into the 11 sections because it's really doable. If you just do a motif or a, a small little section with a couple of motifs, um, you don't get burned out with the color change and you actually see some progress, which I have been enjoying very much. So you'll probably continue to see that in the coming years um, as we move down the road. So winter, um, I was able, or, Spring Quaker, I got 598 stitches started. So then I pulled out my last um, whip of, um, I actually started at April 1st, um, which, you know, when, when you look at, at, at the wool shop, it doesn't, you know, scream April 1st, but I love to stitch on it no matter the time of the year. Um, this is a Lucy Pinaway. Uh, artwork that is charted by Hade. Unfortunately, Hade no longer supports and sells Lucy Pinaway's um, artwork, so this is um, no longer available. I do know there are other full coverage companies out there that do offer her artwork, so by all means, just give it a Google, and I'm sure you will find um, where um, if you love her artwork as well with these little sheep, you could stitch this as well. I haven't seen this one, but I've seen a lot of different ones and in fact have been thinking about picking up a few of those maybe next year after my um, chart diet um, is over at least picking them up so i have them to stitch if i want to down the road i am stitching this here is where i am at i'm stitching this on a 25 count uh, graded fabric i'm stitching this one over one all full cross that is kind of my go-to with this what did I add in this time? I basically worked down here. I brought um, all the purples, all the lighter blues, all the lavenders, brought all those across, kind of got that top line in as well, and then really started on the snow pack. 
I'd had, as you can see, I don't know if you can see, it's really kind of hard. Um, in here, there, there are quite a few already stitched, um, like just off color of white. <laughs> probably their 3865 is probably what their color is. And then you put white over that. So it just gives you a little texture. Um, and so I am basically stitching the white. I um, added in a couple, two or three rows uh, in between there. I love to get the anchored points in, you know, kind of give yourself, a, you know, um, some guidelines and then just stitch. So that's kind of what I am have been doing on this one. I have been working on this since Monday. So I basically did four days on this. I got 3,182 stitches in on this project doing it that way. So love, love, love this project. I am at 12.77%, which seems very small considering how many stitches I have already in. This is a huge project, huge, huge, huge project, but that is okay. I dearly love stitching on it. It's a great blend of confetti, not really even confetti, just small blocks of color. <laughs> um, that kind of stitch together. So um, I think it works great for me and the way I stitch. So, so that is all of the progress that I was able to make since the last video. So not too shabby. So let's go real quick through what I was able to pick up while I was uh, with my friends in Dallas area. Um, these two patterns I did not purchase, they were gifts. So I, um, they, these were things that Sasha had that she was not going to stitch. The first one is Celebrate Halloween from Madame Chantilly. Love that one. She has already stitched it. And so um, when she was offering it up uh, um, to go to a freebie table, I was like, oh, let me, if you don't mind. And I love, love, love Spirit of Christmas set two uh, from Lila Studios. When you open this up, you can see here, she's got a whole collection of the Spirit of Christmas. I think it's broken into two, um, like two sets, and this is set two. And set two has these items. The trees, the bird, the sleigh, which is probably my favorite, and then the snowman. So love, love, love these. I always love a good um, ornament set. You guys know that. So was happy to have acquired those from Sasha. So thank you, friend. Um, for sharing um, all the good things. And let's get to what I purchased. Okay, so what I did was I basically had gone through my fabrics and found some things that I thought were, I, I don't have any projects in mind. I just said, these are some beautiful fabrics. I would like to find colors that inspire me and go well with them. So um, that's what I did. And I was going to a shop that has a tremendous amount of fabric, or um, not fabric, um, they have fabric, but they have a tremendous amount of threads. And it's really a needle point shop, more than a cross stitch shop. So it has a lot of different stuff that you don't encounter all the time. So it was kind of perfect to take this fabric and find threads that go with it. So let me show you the color combinations that we created. I did not do this alone. I definitely needed help. That's why I took them with me because I knew Sasha and Lori were gonna be great help. I've seen the stuff they put together and love it. So they were huge help um, in determining these colors. I still don't have any projects in mind. Um, I just love these color combinations and we'll probably uh, assign them to long dogs down the road. So the first one is the fabric was Bramble by Picture This Plus and I have a whole probably a whole yard of it. I mean I've got a lot. There's It's a lot kind of um, folded up here and I decided to do the Gentle Art Deep Sea. I just loved that color variation, um, kind of that real deep blue and then a little lighter blue. Um, I thought that would be super, super pretty. So that was the first set that I chose. So I think that would make a lovely monochromatic um, piece. And then I had um, this fabric. This is called Spending Amnesia. Um, and this is a mystic fabric. So again, had it in my stash. And I loved its variegation, or I loved its um, modeling. 
so pretty. And so I decided to pull different, I think these two are the different ones. No, these are not. I need a darker one and a lighter one. I decided to do Splendor uh, Silk with this. And so we did this color with these two colorways. There's the darker colorway and the little lighter colorway, but I think those will just pop. And at, using that for a long dog sampler is just gonna be gorgeous on this fabric, I think. So super, super excited about that one. Again, nothing in mind. I just was finding um, threads that I loved um, the color of. Um, knowing that I have like nine long dog samplers. <laughs> so I will give them a sign because I'm, I'm excited about um, getting them going and trying these colors out. So this next one, I have the fabric. The fabric is a Fortnite fabric called So Vain. It's a really pretty kind of light blue, white model. It looks very gray in here. It's, it's a little richer blue. And we paired that with a new, new to me. This is a gum nut yarn in the colorway Stars. Gum nut yarn is a silk thread from Australia, according to the tag, and has just minor variegation. And I thought, oh, that will be super, super pretty on that. So got a couple strands of that. My understanding in talking with the owner is that, yes, um, I bought what they had was they only had two color, but they're, it, it's not, um, it's a fairly consistent color. It's not, this particular brand does not, they, their um, dyeing is not highly variegated. I mean, it's pretty consistent from skein to skein. So um, as soon as I determine exactly what I'm going to do, I will probably figure out how much I need, go ahead and order those. And then I can, you know, if they're not exactly like these two, they're never gonna be exact, but I can work them and weave them in together so that there won't be any noticeable differences. So super, super excited about that one. And um, uh, Sasha, who has used this gum nut thread, should, said, oh, you will just love it, it is, it's fabric thread, it's fabulous thread to stitch with. So, and I love a good silk. You guys know me and silk if you have been around for any amount of time. So I got Splendor Silk, this Gum Nut Silk, this one I'm super, super, super excited about because I love this um, uh, fabric. Let me show you the fabric. The fabric is to die for. Um, this is Heaven's Fury, I believe is what it's called. Uh, yes, Heaven's Fury. This is, hold on, I need my glasses. Imagine that. This is under, sea, under the sea fabrics. I bought this a couple years ago when Leslie um, had this. Um, I have a, a, a big piece of it, so I just kept it folded, but that gives you the variety of, of color. I wanted something that would let the fabric come through with this. I didn't want to overwhelm the fabric with a color. So with much discussion, we decided to go with this beautiful gray uh, Soile d'Alger silk. Um, I think that's going to be fabulous. I think it's going to continue to pull out those deeper, richer colors. So we did that. And then we also paired it because a lot of times these um, long dogs, you know, you're going to have like some accents in it. And we decided to use um, the Silk Lame braid in a very similar tone and give it a little shimmer in certain areas. So I went ahead and picked that up as well. So I think with this fabric, this is just going to be fantastic. And you're going to be able to see the fabric come through on this one. So super, super excited about this one. I think this is my favorite pairing um, and would never have attempted that. Um, and um, Lori made that suggestion. And as soon as she said it, Sasha grabbed colors and I was like, oh yes, oh yes. You two know exactly what you're doing. I do not. So thank you, thank you again, girls. I love it. So, and the last one, I if you look, I was feeling very much in a blue 
um, feeling, I guess, because um, most everything I got is, is, is blue. I had this gorgeous mushroom fabric that I got. Um, I got it from the Craft Center of Fine Suturing. Um, it's just a big yard of mushroom fabric. Who doesn't, who can't use that? And I decided to pair it. I was feeling blue, um, but I, I wanted more of a navy, but the, the navies just didn't seem to work well with this. But I thought this one sure did. This is a, and I had been wanting to try the Sulky. Um, this is Sulky Colorway 1252. This is a 12 weight uh, Sulky cotton. Let me turn it around. So I just thought that's going to be gorgeous on that fabric. So I love the color. Um, it reminds me a lot of the, the um, it's not quite as rich. It's a little lighter color than the other one that um, I'm doing from Variant of Interest. But um, with this mushroom, I thought it was really pretty. So I got uh, a few skeins of, or a few uh, rolls of that. And I'm sure that will cover anything that I decide to do with it. So super excited about that one. So those were the fun purchases that I made. So I got some silks, I got some cottons, um, and now I can get started on, get some other things kitted up and get some plans uh, in process. So that was the haul I had. So um, that's pretty much it for today. Um, thanks again for stopping by. Um, oh, I was gonna talk about plans. Um, real briefly, my next few months are going to be nutsy crazy, like traveling. Um, I'm running home to see my mom. I'm running up to move home um, kids from college. I am, have got graduation. I have a kid turning 16 and going to get his license. I have a kid turning 24. I have a vacation scheduled at the end of May, another uh, getaway at the end of May. I have uh, StitchCon in the middle of June. I have, I mean, I, and I have a retreat coming up in two weeks um, in Dallas again. So um, I have a lot coming up in the next two months. So I'm going to do my very best. It is my full intention to uh, check in with you every two weeks, let you see where I'm at. I may not be filming at exactly the two week mark. I may film the day before and go ahead and post on the typical Fridays like I normally do. But my intention is to try to keep as consistent as possible with you guys just because there's so much going on and it's for really the next two months. And um, I don't wanna wait that long. This is gonna be a long video as it is for me. So I wanna stay consistent with you guys and up to speed. So um, that is my goal. That's the plan is it may, um, uh, the, the day in which I record may be different, but the day in which things are posted should remain the same. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much for stopping by. If you're new, hopefully you found something that you like. Um, today was really um, non-full coverage heavy. So sorry about that if you were here for the full coverage. There are a lot of full coverage projects that I have and um, I am feeling the full coverage pull. So you, as much as I can here in the next few weeks, hit or miss um, with all the traveling that I'll be doing, I will be getting to those. So thanks again, everybody. Um, have a wonderful two weeks. Enjoy spring now that it's here. At least um, hopefully it's coming in your area as it is here in Texas. And um, don't forget, keep stitching those big things. Bye.